Hey everybody, um, today <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, people going through the um, reading slump or the um, dreading reading kind of thing. Um, it's so funny, everyone, like, yeah, um, it's just, it, it's weird because, like, I already posted, like, a response video to this, but, like, BookTube does, like, put pressure on a lot of people to read a lot, shop a lot, get a lot of books, and make sure you're reading the books that are like the hip books on booktube and as you can see oh yeah i follow this like really well because like i want to be super hip but that's not what i'm talking about <clears throat> um there is stress because like i just want to say this for all of you out there um, someone was talking about, I don't want to call people out because I'm not trying to like pick fights or anything like that, but like, I noticed some people saying some stuff really crappy about people using star ratings on Goodreads. <clears throat> and I just want everybody to know who gives a shit about what I have to say, but I just want everyone to know, like, don't feel like you can't put a book on Goodreads and give it a review or give it a star rating without giving it a review. <clears throat> just because some people say it's weak to um, do star ratings, like, fuck them. Like, you're reading because you enjoy reading. I'm not reading because I have, like, a long, deep-seated desire to be one of the most amazing book critics in the world. I read because I want to entertain myself. <clears throat> and I find it extremely entertaining. And when I use Goodreads, I use it um, mainly... Like, people have been talking, like, Steve did a video today, and Peg did a video, um, about the community and stuff on Goodreads, and I really haven't attempted to get that deep into, um, the Goodreads community, and maybe I should, um, I just don't think about it. But yeah, I would love to just like gab with people about the shit books that I read. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> that kind of took me off on a tangent there. Um, but I mean, this should never be a place where people feel bullied, you know? It's freaking book too. Like people read books and talk about them. Who gives a shit, you know? Like, um, I don't know. That's, like, my main takeaway here. Um, just think of what you say before you say it. Think if it's going to have a negative effect on anyone. And if someone says something that's fucking stupid, just brush it off. They ain't the boss of you. You know what I mean? So, um, <clears throat> anyway, um, I wanted to talk about, um, ways to kind of get out of this slumpy nature that some of you might be feeling. Yes, I got dropped on my head like that. Uh, 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 uh. I'm having a hard time. Okay, um, <clears throat> now I'm just going to tell you things that I have done to get out of these little situations when um, I get really 
just annoyed and I feel like something's dragging on. First off, DNF whatever the fuck you want to DNF. Like, your time is precious, DNF it, okay? Um, if there's something that is just, like, killing you to get through, DNF it. Um, it's not the end of the world. Um, find an author you like <clears throat> and read a bunch of books by that author. Now, that might sound silly, but I've talked to, seriously, a lot of people who don't like, it's not that they don't like, but they want to be able to read as much as they can, so they tend not to read multiple books by an author. And um, I had never heard of that before, and it's probably because <clears throat> I come from like a collecting background, and I have like a bit of OCD that when I start collecting something or I start getting something, I feel like I need to get all of it. Um, for some reason, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so that's probably a mental health issue problem that I need to go get looked at, but whatevs. So, <clears throat> find someone you like and just get everything they have and read it. Um, for those of you who watch my channel, you know I go through these chunks where I will just read like one author until I'm done with everything or almost done with everything because I fear like being done with everything and then like like I've read everything <clears throat> that I could get my hands on of Raymond Chandler and I feel a bit empty you know like I absolutely love Raymond Chandler and knowing that he's not going to write anything else is very upsetting to me. <clears throat> That's why I have I have had one Al Wheeler book by Carter Brown sitting here waiting for me to read, but I don't want to read it because I don't want it to end, you know? Um, but that's me. Um... So that kind of defeated the purpose of me telling you to find an author you like and then just, like, go for it. <clears throat> um, another thing to do is um, shorter fiction or short stories. Um, I typically don't really like short stories unless it's by an author I like. But, like, when you have um, books like this, like the Big Book of Pulps, what like I do is I'll be um, reading through something like this and then I'll read a story by somebody that I think is like amazing and I'm like oh dude I need to look up this author more <clears throat> and then I spend the next like month of my life um, they're fighting over one ball Three dogs, one ball. There's more than one ball, but the one ball they all want is the one that's in Sally's mouth. And the balls are identical. Um, go figure. But anyway, um, what was I? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I end up spending like a lot of time over the next couple months um, collecting everything I can from that author and reading as much of it as I can. So it goes back to reading someone who you like something that what's the word I'm looking for here? Like if it's not broken, don't fix it. If you find somebody that takes you to places you've never been and you're enjoying that ride, stick with it. There's nothing wrong with that. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with not reading the next book by so-and-so right now because you want to finish reading all the books by so-and-so. Um, <clears throat> so that's something that I do. Um, so that's why it's so hard for me to get through like collections of short stories because as soon as I read one that I like, I'm off to the races looking for everything I could find by that author, which is why my Carol John Daly hunt has been so bad because... I can't find that guy's stuff 
anywhere. And I know I could just buy some on Amazon, but that kind of... It's the thrill of the hunt that is really fun. Um, different genres. Um, my dogs are adorable. I <clears throat> never really liked science fiction um, growing up. It was okay, and I would touch some of it. Um, but it wasn't like my go-to thing. And um, a while back, I was... Um, I don't remember what I was reading, but I just hated it. And I couldn't think of anything that I wanted to, like, read, you know? So, um, I ended up getting some Star Trek books, um, and reading those, and that was really, really fun. It was, like, a completely new experience for me, and it was... It just took me to a place that I had either hadn't been in a while or hadn't been since I was, like, a kid. And um, so every once in a while, grabbing something that you normally wouldn't read um, just to kind of give, like, your brain a palate cleanser is pretty fun to do. Um, another thing is... Um, different types of books like for instance for the longest time all I would read was on my phone like if I couldn't get a book on my phone I didn't read it because I had my phone with me all the time and I was out a lot and it was just easy well then I noticed that the reading I was doing was getting less and less and less, and I just wasn't as interested as I was for some reason. And it could have been a number of things. Um, but what I ended up doing is I went to this used bookstore and um, got a bunch of Carter Brown books and the paperbacks and stuff and Nick Carter and um, started reading paperbacks again and... I hadn't really read paperbacks in a long time. And this is a funny little thing about me. And you're going to just die laughing here. I really hate the way paper feels on my fingertips. Um, some paper more than others. But um, I really do not like the way paper feels. And it used to be I couldn't even like handle books or comic books and I don't know what it was because I used to have so many comic books growing up and the comic books back when I was growing up they were like on like newsprint you know and um and like newspapers in general it's the worst paper in the world like if you're reading something and when you're done your fingers look like you climbed up a chimney that shouldn't exist, okay? Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so I really dislike the way paper feels. But um, I could hold books in a way where my fingertips don't actually touch it, so it's okay. Um, so that's a weird little fact about me. Um, but even audiobooks. Like, um, I was never into the idea of an audiobook. And when I started reading audiobooks or listening to audiobooks, like, my reading shot through the roof because times when I couldn't read, like, when I was driving or um, just anything, cooking or whatever, I was able to listen to books. And Zoe was the one who got me into that because she would um, listen to books all the time. And she would just be sitting there with her earbuds in and go, <gasps> uh, <gasps> Oh, or go, <laughs> like out of nowhere in a quiet room. And it would always freak me out. And I would always be like, what, what? And she can't hear me because she's got earbuds in. So I'm like, fuck this. I'll just do it myself. And, um, that's kind of how that started. So that helps. Um, but the thing that, 
probably helps me more than anything is nonfiction books about books. Okay? Like, seriously. Like, and it is so hard for me to finish these books because I'll be reading them. <clears throat> for instance, Zoe got me this book like two years ago, probably. I'm like trying to actually read through it now because before I would just like open it up and then read a little bit and see a name and see like a book they wrote and go, Oh, I wonder what that's like. And then I'll like go get that book, read that book. And um, then want to read a bunch of other books by that author. <clears throat> but um, anyway, so if you follow me on Goodreads, you will notice that today I added a ton of books on my TBR because I read a chapter of this and there were so many authors that it was talking about that I have never read that I was just like, oh my God. Because this is basically like a history of Pulp Fiction, a history of the medium, the genre, the collecting. Um, it's really, really well done. <clears throat> but again, I'm like not even halfway through it. Um, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. This one, I start reading it and I immediately want to go buy some books paperbacks from hell i am like this is like <clears throat> trying to think of what i could compare this to it's almost like a self-help book that you can't go to the next chapter until you've checked all the boxes and of the chapter you're in and you can't continue unless you've completed like the <clears throat> the bonus chapter um checklist of things that you need to do. I don't know. Um, but this, um, I read a bit of it <clears throat> and get irritated that I haven't read certain books and I'm like, Oh my gosh, that sounds so great. And so I end up making a list on my phone. <clears throat> and for a lot of this stuff, the only places you could find this stuff really, um, in mass, I guess, is in like Hollywood. So when we go down the mountain and go to LA, like I'll have this list of books that I want to get at the used bookstores around there. And when I get them, I come back and check them off the list. <clears throat> and if I've made a sizable dent in the list, then I go and read the next bit. Um, but probably one of the best books I have um, on this topic, let's say, is um, paperback, <laughs> paperback Confidential. If you have not read this book, you are completely missing out because this is exactly what I like. Okay, for instance, like here's the chapter on Carter Brown. Okay. It gives a little bit of information about him. It gives all the pseudonyms he went by. It gives you a list of his work that you could go out and get. And then at the bottom, it tells you, if you like him, you'll like these people. <clears throat> so that last bit right there, if you like him, you'll like these people, has turned this book into like a Bible of sorts for me. Because I'll read... Um, someone I'm into, let's say, <clears throat> like for, it says Michael Avalon and Henry Kane. So then you go into the back or you go into the t uh, table of contents and then you're like, oh, okay, now I got to look for Michael Avalon. <laughs> Boom. Page 28. Okay. Here I go. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. Oh, oh, we got another chapter on this guy. Oh, and it's a big one. Oh my gosh. If you like this guy, you like Carter Brown and Henry Kane. Oh my gosh, Henry Kane. I heard that name before. Now I gotta look him up. Oh, 188. Oh my gosh. And it turns into like this huge. Oh, I was actually right there. Henry Kane. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, 
He wrote his elderly queen. What? If you like Henry Kane, you might like Peter Cheney and John Jakes. What? More people. And then you just like go through and through and through. And it's like a never ending cycle of like amazing things that you could get. So, um, that's probably like my biggest, like, definitely. I, I like the history of things. I like the, I like going back and looking at who published what on what years, who, um, like one of the things that um, I never really thought about, for instance, was there were all these great crime writers and like detective writers that were writing all these books. And then like all around the same time, there was like this like gap where it seemed like no books were coming out. And it was because all of them got picked up by Hollywood to write adaptations of either their books or other books. And, um, they all hated it for the most part. And then they came back and wrote like another book and then died. Um, that's a little bit of a generalization, but you understand my point. So anyway, it's just like, I, when you do that kind of stuff, I feel like it kind of rejuvenates you and rejuvenates your want and desire to seek stuff out and try to figure it out. Um, so, basically, I don't even know what I'm going to call this video. Um, I'll figure it out. So, um, until next time, everybody, which will probably be pretty soon here, because I think I'm going to do a tag video. So, everyone, cross your fingers and hope that this video actually goes onto my computer and not into some random thing that didn't record any of this. I'm scared.